In our series, Eye on Earth, we are looking at how climate change is contributing to these severe wildfires. Take a look at federal satellite footage. This is from NOAA, and it shows smoke billowing from California and Oregon, extending far over the Pacific Ocean. Several of the California fires started when a so-called lightning siege with nearly 12,000 strikes in a week hit the state last month. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli joins us now. Jeff, good morning to you. Hard to overstate how extreme this fire season has been. Three out of four, three out of the four largest fires to ever uh, ignite in California are burning right now. What's going on here? So we have a short term reason for this and then there's a long term reason for this. The short term reason is we just had two unprecedented heat waves back to back some of the hottest temperatures ever experienced in the southwest and in california uh, both of them basically unprecedented made worse by climate change and that really dries out the foliage it dries out the brush it dries out the trees on top of that it's been very dry there hasn't been much rain and we have a bad drought in most of the west and especially in places like oregon that's the short-term reason the long-term reason is mostly climate change. Yes, there's a buildup of brush, that's for sure. But climate change is making things worse because over the course of the past few decades, air temperatures in the West have risen a couple of degrees to a few degrees depending upon where you are. What that does is it adds energy and heat to the atmosphere. That dries out the brush, it dries out the atmosphere, it causes a moisture gap or moisture deficit in the atmosphere. And research shows that that moisture deficit can explain almost all of the increase in burned area since the 1970s. And so because of that, since the 1970s, we've seen an increase five times in burned area in California. Fire season is two to three months longer than it was. And also 17 of the 20 worst fires have burned since two thousand and we have a graphic to show you which is really amazing it shows you in the yellow bars uh, the burned area from each and every year over the past several years notice what has happened in the year 2020 that is off the charts and that's because also we've seen a rise in temperatures so there's a direct correlation between climate change and burned area if you look at that chart we're only halfway through 2020. Wow, yeah, we're seeing a lot of things we've never seen before, Jeff. One of those things is these pictures out of San Francisco, the Bay Area. It looked like a scene from Blade Runner, really apocalyptic looking, kind of an orange haze, no filter at all. Uh, what was uh, causing that? So it's not climate change, and we hope and we think it's not the apocalypse, right? But what it is is very similar to sunrise and sunset. When light has to go through a wide part of the atmosphere, it gets scattered a lot more. So what happened in places like San Francisco is for weeks on end, the smoke was not blowing into town. Now it's blowing into town, and the air became stagnant. Stagnant. It got trapped. And what happens is during sunrise and sunset, the light shines through, and it gets scattered, and it reveals the spectrum of colors. And the last of those colors is red and orange. So if you have thick enough smoke, thick enough pollution, it will scatter and your eye will only see the reds and the orange. So just like sunrise and sunset, when it's really smoky, it has kind of the same effect and it turns the sky orange. It does make for a memorable picture. Is there anything that people can do out west right now to improve the situation that they're living through? You know, everybody can do something, but even, you know, one person, a group of people, or even a region like the West can't do it alone. This is a global problem. We need systemic collective solutions. But here's the good news. This actually is an opportunity for us to create a better life for ourselves. We need to throw every solution and the whole kitchen sink at this. The good news is we know what the problem is. We know what the solution is, and now we have the technology for it. Renewable energy is becoming cheaper than fossil fuels. We have to lessen our addiction to fossil fuels in order to combat this problem. The good news is because it's becoming cheaper and economically feasible, and it's actually better for the economy. Hmm. By the way, it's creating tons of jobs. Right now, the number one and number three jobs, occupations, growth, are solar and wind technician in America, so it's creating great American jobs, and because the economy is moving in that direction, I think we should seize on this as an opportunity. That's definitely something to keep in mind, Jeff. Thank you very much.